about me. Some of you may have already heard the backstory, but uh, in April I celebrated 30 years in real estate. Yay. 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 30. Cool, wonderful, exciting, <laughs> exhausting years. <laughs> um, I started out, my first husband left when the kids were one, three, five, seven, and nine. For his 20 year old secretary. Uh, no child support, fought it like crazy. Back in those days, in, um, in the early 80s, um, they, they ordered $325 for five kids. Now I know people to get 2000 for one, you know. But anyway, it was hard to do. It was an uphill battle. He was in business for himself and he always complained, didn't have any money, and blah, 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 blah. I paid lawyers ad infinitum. I didn't have any money to do so, but I did and it didn't work. Finally, I decided to represent myself. And um, I came and I never brought the kids because I didn't want them to be involved in all of that. But this day I brought the kids, I pulled out all the stuff, sat in front of the, the master. And, and one thing that my husband knows about me and not many other people do is that I, um, when I get myself really, really mad, when I am furious, I cry. And that's not a good thing. You know, it really isn't because, uh, you know, I go, and one more thing I did, and so like all that stuff that I did. So that's what I did in front of the master. You know, I was like, I had all my notes and I was all set to go. And then halfway through, I just like, <laughs> anyway, I went back to work and, uh, um, you know, I had, I had been a single mom, I mean, a, 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 a mom at, at home, stay at home mom. And, uh, you know, Girl Scout leader, you know, um, of the, running the Christmas Bazaar, all that kind of stuff that I always wanted to do with the five kids. And uh, that he left on the Thursday after Christmas. So I didn't tell anybody the whole week because I want to spoil their holidays. And went Sunday night I went to bed and said, okay, tomorrow's my day. I have to go out and find a job. I got to do something. I was trained to be a teacher. So I, I put out all my feelers. So getting the job was not a problem. I wound up in a nursery school was six months later, which was a um, a full-time position in teaching, but um, it was like what to do with the kids because a couple of them were still home and my friends were wonderful and took them on with their kids and it just all worked out. The Lord is good. He works in very strange and mysterious ways. But, uh, you know, it was one of those things where it was a mindset that, you know, all right, what people say, oh, how did you ever do that? I said, I don't know, but what was my choice? You know, what was the choice, right? So I was very, um, uh, I don't know, focused on that, I guess is the word. And um, I made $9,000 my first year teaching, which is <laughs> crazy. Um, so one thing led to the other in d different positions and so forth. And then um, I got a call one Saturday, I was cleaning. I can still remember I had these little pink shorts on turning cloth with a top to match. And the kids were with their dad, which they hated to go because it was not fun for them. But I had to do my lesson plans and clean the house. So I was cleaning and the phone rang and on the phone was uh, was this voice that said, hello, and I went, Bob. And this was the guy I dated back in, knew in high school, dated in college, and thereafter. Got serious about it, we talked about what we wanted out of life and I was an only child and I said, I want lots of kids, as many as God will give me, and they all end up Irish names. And he said, wait a minute, I'm the oldest of seven. I had my thing with that. Uh, and I went Robert the third, and I only went two. And I said, well, that's it. We're done. <laughs> so <laughs> wasn't that cut and dry. But, you know, that's it. I said, we don't want the same things out of life. So this was Bob calling me on the phone 12 years later. And he never married. His mother went to card club. And one of the ladies said, did you know Maureen really got um, a divorce? And uh, I he, he asked me, I said, yeah, divorced and annulled and everything. I said, I'm a free woman. <laughs> and so we spent two hours on the phone. And after that, I said, listen, I've got five kids and two jobs and I don't date. He said, well, I wasn't asking you. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> but a couple months later, he called again and said, maybe we should go out to Longwood Gardens, just catch up, go to dinner. We'll go to the Newtown Squire. That's where Tekka is now. And I thought, God, nobody ever takes me out to dinner. So um, so I, I went out with them and I ordered uh, prime rib and cheesecake for dessert because I didn't know when I was going to get out again. And uh, what happened was that he had gained a considerable <laughs> amount of weight. And at the time, I my, my part-time job was a leader for Weight Watchers. And then that moved into something different later on. But um, he found out that, so he lost 90 pounds. And then I was his like long-range goal. You know, here I am, eating cheesecake and, and trying to, right? So um, anyway, um, six months later, we got engaged. I made him wait a year and a half because I said, you don't understand what my life is like. Two of my kids were like uh, 14 months apart, Caitlin. <laughs> and, um, one year they were in the same 
uh, uh, like when O'Hara would have freshman and sophomore back to school night, junior and senior back to school night. One year they'd be in two different days, but one year they'd be, and you have to go through their schedules. I couldn't do that, you know, so I said, you're going to go to that, you're going to go to the softball game, you're going to go to the soccer matches, you're going to see what the craziness is all about. He was okay with it, and uh, people said, oh my God, you know, you, and my mother was living with me at the time. She was 75, she died at 94. But when, when, when he married me, he said, he would tell people, well, you know, my mother's 75, you know, how long could she last? <laughs> she died at 94. And, and the thing is that it's funny because, you know, he didn't want all these kids, but I think it would have been better for him to have them y younger because then he came into where they were 10, 12, 14, 16, and 10, 12, yeah. You know, 10, 12, 14, 16, and 18. So that was a couple of preteens and a bunch of teenagers and a 16-year-old daughter who, 16 is a crazy thing anyway. So uh, he had a lot of trials and tribulations. He put a suitcase in his closet for the Holiday Inn if he ever needed to go there on a weekend just to get away. But he never used it, but um, here we are, 32 years married. So Aww. the Lord is good, like I said, and, and um, things happen for a reason. And what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So. My goal in life was to make sure that I moved on, and I have a, a, a who's a friend now, but she was an author that I had met, and she wrote a book called Victorious Woman, and it was about all the people that she met. She was a public speaker all over the country, and uh, she wrote this book called uh, Vict Victorious Woman, and it, it's a self-help book, and in it are chapters about various women who had cancer, who had uh, a fire, a major fire, lost everything, and what the difference is between people who lay down beside it, make everybody feel sorry for them, make everybody want to do for them, and uh, and the people who get up and say, "I got to do this," right, Sam? <laughs> so um, that was that's her book, and so I'm a chapter in the book, which is really kind of cool. Anyway, uh, when I met Bob and we got married, he had a, a three bedroom house in Havertown, I had a three bedroom in Gladstone Manor in Lansdowne, and he said, "I am not." You're, I'm not coming there, and you're not coming here because we need a bigger house. I, I, will, I will go crazy in this, a three-bedroom house. So we sold the two houses, and we bought a seven-bedroom in Drexel Hill with four bathrooms. It turned out to be the money pit, and I wasn't in, uh, in uh, real estate at the time. So we made all the wrong decisions, you know, and um, needed a roof very badly. Home inspector said, seller said, I'm not doing it. We love the house. We bought it anyway. And then we had to put $14,000 on this great big house roof. And my husband loves central air, so he wanted that. That was another $14,000. And so one day he's sitting out on the porch, and he's just staring at his face. And I said, what's going on? And he said, well, I was just thinking how I used to take trips and go on cruises and all that kind of stuff. And all I do is pay bills for the house. <laughs> it was like the money pit. So he said, I'm going to go to the Acme, and I'm going to get a second job. And I felt terrible. And I said, you know, these are my kids and my mother, and I feel terrible that we're in this situation. And I can't really help because I, at that time, was making 22000 a year. And I said, we, um, I said, you know what? We were two blocks away from Century 21 Reber, which is no longer there. It was old mom and pop Century 21, two blocks from the house. And I figured, well, if I go get into real estate, I could be down there, and if somebody called from, from the schools, any of the schools they were in, I could be right there. And um, in the summertime, I would throw my bathing suit on with a maxi dress over top of it, which was the style then, and take them to the pool and do work at the pool. And then people would come up and say, no, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm in real estate. I got more listings those summers at the pool than anything else. But um, I, I'm now in 30, 30 years in real estate, and Bob lasted six weeks at the Acme. So, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, such is life. So it was just, um, you know, a lot of things that... Um, that needed to happen to make it happen like this. But um, today we're going to talk a little bit about selling the sellers and how we we can. Um, I mean, being a listing agent, I have to tell you, is so much better these days than being a buyer's agent. You know, I just wrote an offer at eight o'clock this morning, stayed up all night to try to get everything done. And I know, you know, when it, there was a communication issue with her and I, and her brother couldn't be here, and you know, I'm explaining about the appraisal contingency and the appraisal gap, and this, and she's just going, huh? And I said, we'll just put it in the other way. And so it's, you know, you know, some people are not doing inspections, but you know, I, as a real estate agent, think you should. Yeah, well, then I, I will. So there's seven offers on the house. She probably won't get it, but she's gone through the motions anyway. You know, so it's it's hard. It's really really hard. Now I, I would say, as of the last week and a half. Selling a house isn't all that easy either because everything's changing. 
You know, have you checked out the stats that come out through, um, um, what's it called, the, the, the stats that come out the 15th of the month? Yeah, no. Um, In, uh, right. Right. right, right, has the, you know, where they give you all the, the changes from month to month and year to year, mm -hmm. and all the hours are down yeah. for April. And the, the Aprils are coming out, you know, the Mays are coming out now the 15th of this month. So if you haven't checked those stats out, it's great to show the sellers, especially now, because they're full, their heads are full of, you know, wonderful stuff, and we have to bring them back to, because I see it coming, don't you? I okay. definitely see it coming, yeah. So, um, so just as a, 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 an idea for you guys, when you get a lead, where do your leads come from? Where are they coming from now? Are they coming from, you know, hard work on your end? Are they coming from uh, referrals, repeats? Referrals. Referrals, social media spheres. Okay, a little bit of everything. Floor time. Floor time. That's great. Yeah. Mailers. Mailers. So we have we have to do a lot more than just sit around waiting for the phone to ring, which a lot of new real estate agents think that's going to happen. Oh, I'm just going to sit there. I'll you know have a little thing and I'll have my cell phone and they're going to call me because they all know I'm in real estate. And a lot of them don't. If, if the, you know your sphere, they're a little nervous. They don't want you to know how much money they had in the bank and things like that. So it's not all that, not all that easy. But you know, typically it's you know for me it's past clients and referrals and the, I have a billboard in Drexel Hill. Every time I think I'm going to get rid of it, I get three or four more calls. You know, so I still keep up. Um, it started out at two hundred dollars a month. Now it's four fifty after twenty eight years. So it's not a bad investment for the time. I went to a, uh, I had a, a, a seller who had sold his duplex in Lillian Avenue in Drexel Hill. And he told me when he was selling it that he's had it for a lot of years. It was given to him when his uh, father-in-law passed away. His father-in-law gave it to his wife and him. And um, uh, they uh, were keeping it and he took good care of it. And he said, we waited till now to list the house, the, the duplex, because my daughter graduates from high school and this money will be her tuition money for college. And uh, we wound up getting like 275 or I think something like that. They owe 60,000 and uh, sold in two days, multiple offers. And he called me the next day and he said, would you feel weird if I invited you to my daughter's graduation party? I said, no, that's a really nice thing. And he said, there's a lot of people there I know that are thinking about selling their house. And I want to introduce you as the person who's putting my daughter through school. <laughs> and he did. And there was one lady that I didn't meet at the thing, and I went in to get cake. And she said, wait a minute, you're, the, you're Maureen, the lady on the billboard. And I said, yeah. She said, oh my God, you, I need your help. She said, my daughter's 28, she's still living at home. I need her out into a condo. I just told her the other day, and her daughter came through and she said, Bonnie, this is the lady that's gonna get you out of my house. <laughs> so, you know, you never know where it's coming from. You really don't. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, uh, the listing presentation itself. Now, um, I do a two part. It's Keller Williams teaches a one part. So you can do whatever's comfortable for you. Uh, of the ones that are, of, of the people that are, have uh, listed houses recently, you know, how are you doing it? How many of you do just one shot in and out? Usually. Usually? And how many are doing the two? I mean, sometimes it's three. <laughs> yeah. Right now, I'm like going to my third pre-listing appointment next week. Okay. All right. Well, you know what? The more time you're in front of them, the more they start to. Yeah, I have the listing. It's just they're they're just like not ready. Yeah. A lot of yeah. People. Yeah. I find, and it's happened to me when I when I try to cut corners and do a one is that I've done all my homework ahead of time and so forth, and then I get there and I've asked the right questions. But I didn't ask the question about, you know, is your basement finished? And I find out it's finished. Or um, I, I drive up to the house because I did my comps on Thursday and I'm meeting with them on Saturday morning and the house next door goes on the market yeah. and I didn't know about it. And now I'm coming to present and now I'm scrambling on my phone to get all the information. So I like to be able to take that time and do a, a presentation well and professionally with all the bells and whistles rather than that, and I take the, the time of the first one to get to know the people and to get to know us. So I basically tell them, I said, I'm gonna come through and you're gonna take me around the house. You play realtor, I play buyer. And you're gonna tell me everything that you wanna tell me about the house. And that really helps me to know what, their, what their, their points are, you know, what they really, really love about the house. So I make sure that I make a big deal out of that in the remarks. 
um, you know, even though maybe it's not, they just think it's the most wonderful. Like baseboard heat, baseboard heat. You know what baseboard heat is, right? Mm -hmm. you know, it's it's nice. It's expensive. It's it's cast iron. Um, and I remember one time I had a house in Yaden with baseboard heat, and the guy kept saying, "Now, do you remember to put the baseboard?" I said, "Yeah, I will." I'm going, "What? Well, who cares? You know, who cares?" Um, and I was fairly new. And over the table at settlement, the guy leaned in who was buying the house. He said. I am so excited about those baseboards. And the seller goes, see, see. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, baseboard, with baseboard heat, you can put a sofa right up against it. It's still mm -hmm. fine. You know, it's not standing out like a, mm -hmm. a radiator and so forth. So there's things to be said for baseboard heat. But at the time, I couldn't care less. But I, because he wanted it, that's what I did. So uh, I do the two part. The first is for about an hour. And I build rapport. I try to ask them lots of questions. I try to find the common denominator. You know, like I'll find a, 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 a um, what do you call it, certificate from Westchester, you know, the, the, where they graduated. And, oh, I went to Westchester. There's always that six degrees of Kevin Bacon, you know, up when I went to this party on Saturday. There's, there's, there was so many people. I walked into a sea of faces in the backyard. I didn't know a soul except for one. And, um, but as I talked to people, there was like, oh, well, you know, and, you know. <laughs> I bought a new car yesterday from, um, oh, my gosh. He was named it Bill Cadillac, or Caitlin. He's your husband's oh, first face. Huh? Mark? No. Vince? Vince. Oh, yeah. 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 He's got and uh, I just looked, looked, I saw something on the, there were like three cars on the lot and two in the thing. There's no cars. There's no cars, yeah. And uh, I just stopped by and I looked at it and I called him about it on Monday. And um, then I was doing the paperwork yesterday. And I and your sister called me because I had gotten a floor call. Uh -huh. And um, uh, I said, oh, oh. I said, you know, I should ask you. you know, I said, I'm sure Pace is. He goes, yeah, he's yeah. my first cousin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just had a wedding with him. <laughs> yeah, so you never know. You never know how things are going to go. Um, and so that's the the, um, the first time. And I bring with me a pre-listing packet. Now, in my pre-listing packet, it's I used to, you know, before um, internet and all that stuff, I used to bring a lot of stuff. Now, I basically refer them. I write it on my thing. I have a, um, a fairly new website, and all my testimonials are on there you know it's a really good navigated website and I put that on the folder and I bring a few little handouts about how to stage a house and what the market's like I'm a big thing I get up at like 6 37 every morning and I do do nothing but go through my emails and go to the par just listed and the NAR stuff and the you know all the stuff that's giving us the statistics <laughs> so that I can talk really intelligently about the market and um, and act like I know what I'm what I'm talking about, and that that really helps, and I can do a little bit of that. And I put some of that, some of those recent things in that. On the other side, you know, we have to give them the consumer notice at the first substantive meeting, so that consumer notice always gets signed with buyers and sellers the first time you see them. And the affiliate services, and that's the way I explain that is basically just saying, you know, what it used to be when I first started that all the brokers were little podunk brokers, it was a family owned businesses, it was one here and here, and Drexel Hill got this guy and Springfield got that guy, and then I said when the bigger Prudentials came in and Weikerts came in, these little guys were having trouble because they were taking 60% and giving the agents 40, so then they had to do 50-50, which killed them uh, as far as commission split, and then when the big big box banks came along and were dragging people away from the, from the small places, they had, we wound up giving the, you know, the agent 60 and they kept 40 and it's hard to keep a business going with only 40% of the, of the commission. So I explained to them that you know the reason why we have this here it's because of RESPA, the Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act, and they say the broker must tell you um, what he owns um, you know, to, to, to bring the money into the, to the company. And then I show the list of all the things that, that um, Mr. Campo owns and say, this is the guy I should have married 30 years ago because I'd be able to bring the mirror today, like he is when I see him on Facebook. Uh, and then I explain about the the, uh, um, the the affiliates and it makes them a lot easier. And I'll say up front, I said, I don't even know why you need to know this, but you do say here it is. And, and, so the women don't. and then I bring, um, either bring or send a copy of the uh, uh, Merck's Preferred Home Warranty. I do, I have a video for sellers that I made with um, Brian uh, before I get there to tell them what to expect. And I send another one after I've been there to tell them what comes next. And um, and I, I love that because um, you know they, I, I'm not just breaking in and saying, here, let's do this. They know what's happening before I get there. So that, what's that and, video? Um, 
Excuse me? What's that video say now? Well, the first one is after I made the appointment on the phone. I sent them a note, a handwritten note. And like I might have made the appointment Monday, I send that out Monday afternoon and then, and then I follow that up with a video to say what's going to be expected that first time I come. You're going to walk through with me, I'm, you play real try, play buyer, I'm going to take some notes, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions, we're going to get to know each other, find some common ground, explain everything I just mentioned to you. And then the, the, the second one is after we've met and I thank them for, for their time, and I said now, now that Paul's in my field, I have to figure out you know, the best way for you to get your house sold and that involves a lot of things that involves maybe some staging maybe some honeydews and so forth and so on that second presentation when that when i come back to do the presentation uh i i tell them ahead of time that i'm going to give them what i call my plus and minus list so the plus list is the stuff that's great that everybody loves you know like they've got all the bedrooms painted gray that's a good thing <laughs> The wallpaper in the dining room and the kitchen maybe not so great, so that goes on the minus list. And um, and I, I go down those lists and I give them the plus list first and I said, no, I give them the minus list first. Because I said, if I go over the pluses with you, you're not you're gonna be hearing me but not listening because you're gonna be looking at what, what I have here on the minus list. So let's get over get that over with first. From that minus list, I do a honey-do list. And I pre prefix it saying I give my husband one all the time. And I'm lucky at one day. Oh, there's a doorbell waiting to be put on. I had a, a bridal shower on Saturday, and he was, he said, around, it was at a brunch, it was 11 30. At 10 o'clock, he's coming up with his thing, and he's going, I said, wait a minute, wait, not now. You're not going to do this now. And it's still sitting there. So he was going to do it Saturday, you know, and now it's Tuesday, and it's still there. So, um, you know, I, I, I tell them with the honeydew that they are suggestions, merely suggestions, and that um, if, they choose to do some, then the bottom, the, 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 the price can be higher. If they don't, that's fine too. I have what I call my entourage. I think some of you have that already too. And behind the scenes, it's wonderful if you don't, that you know, if you need a plumber or electrician. But I have guys, literally, that I have been using for 25, 28 years. And when I say jump, they say how high. So if I call them on a Saturday afternoon when I'm at a listing appointment and say, how soon can you get over to look at the heater because I think it needs a good cleaning, they'll be there Monday morning. Because they know, because I've told them ahead of time, that uh, you know, if you don't come, you, and the people will say to me, and I'm sure they say to you all the time, um, you know, I've called six plumbers, and nobody wants to come. And when they come, then it's two two weeks more before I get the proposal, because a lot of times if they don't want the job, they just don't bother, you know. So um, I think the answer. Did you have a question? I just I, I wanted to finish um, about your videos. How long were they? Oh, really short. Um, Less than five minutes, okay. so probably probably more like four. Okay. Yeah, Brian told me that. Mm. And is it just you talking, yep. or is there? Okay. I have a nice background in the background. And you just explain what's going, what to explain. Yeah. It's not like designed with footage or anything. No. Okay. I have a background, and then Brian listens to the to the um, the video, and then he posts pictures up. So if I say we're going to do this, then he has a little picture with that he grabs out of oh, okay. some sort of. So he does. Thing. So there is. Mm -hmm. there he, yeah, I didn't have to do that. No, yeah. But he, he did that. Yes. And, um, you know, I, I'd rather pay him to do it myself, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you send it through an email? Mm hmm? You send that through an mm -hmm. email? Yep. Kathy has it on her thing. Mm -hmm. I just go over and say, send one, send two. And uh, I have one for set for buyers, too. And uh, I'm working. I used to have one. I had all of these years ago when somebody came to the office and we all got the videos and then they left and you never heard from them again. And um, I, I also um, am anxious to do one to, for recruiting, you know, for other agents. And, you know, to send that, you know, as I'm working with them or afterwards when it's over or that kind of thing. Okay. It's just something different that not everybody else does. Maureen, do you make the second appointment while you're still on the first appointment? Yes, typically. Okay. Now, if they, sometimes it's like, I don't need them both to be there on the first appointment. I like because I don't like the whisper down the lane. Yeah. But if the film is she's there, I usually wait and say check his schedule because I, I will not do an appointment unless all of the principals are there. Because yeah. otherwise it is whisper down the lane and somebody heard something that I didn't say. You know? So I try to have them there both times. But I do usually try to say let's get out our calendars right now and, uh, and, and make that second appointment. And I tell them well, you all know me, so you know I can talk. So uh, I, <laughs> the first appointment is it's about an hour, and that's a you know. But the second appointment, I'll tell them we could go a little longer than that. 
And I've been there sometimes a couple of hours. It depends on them and how many questions they have. And we talk a little bit and we schmooze a little bit and get to know each other a little bit. And I think that's important as well. So I tell them it could be up to two hours. So make the time because I don't want to do all this work sit down with them and then they go, you know what, I have to pick up my daughter at soccer practice. Yeah. You know, if, if, this is, if this is a priority for me, it should also be one for you. I don't and, say that. And that's probably in your video too, you say how much time to expect. I I, I've that started in to do that yeah. in my emails yeah. to tell people like, yeah. expect this to take nine Yeah, because you don't want them to jump off on you. you no, know? oh, you also don't want to inconvenience them with like, yeah. that they don't want. Yeah, or they're hungry. <laughs> you know, right. It's a clock I mean, appointment and their stomachs are grumbling, you know? Or, yeah, whatever it happens to right. be. Some right. people, they just assume every appointment is mm -hmm. an hour, yeah. but it's really not. It's not. And the stuff that I bring there are things, I, I tell them to get their laptop fired up because I will put the comps on there. I, I usually send them to me and then I forward to them about an hour before I go. because I. You know, part of me says maybe they should be looking at it and delving into it a little bit more, and the other part says that I don't want them to be preconceived when I get there. So I usually send it to me and then forward it to them just before I go and tell them to have that up there because that's the best. I mean, you know, I don't want to copy stuff in, in color here and spend a fortune on that, and I don't even like the black and whites anymore. I mean, that's what I used to use years ago, but. It's much better that way. And then we can all kind of gather around the laptop. I use my phone, they use their laptop, and, and we go through things. And I don't know, probably about six times out of 10, they've already figured this out. Because they, you know, this one girl said, every night after I put the kids to bed, I sit down at my computer with my glass of wine or two, and I look at all the comps, and I know what's going on. So, I mean, they're smart today. That's the difference between when I started and now. When I started, and I took a buyer out, and said, well, what do you think I should offer? Well, you know, the only thing we had was um, a book with a black and white, one black and white cotton. This is like the person going to school barefoot up home both ways, right? But um, <laughs> uh, we had a, a book that only came out once a week, and it was like gold. Nobody could take it out of the office, and we brought people in. And if you, if you ever have a, like a, a, one of those um, bank safety boxes, you know, you put your stuff in, they put you in that little room and you open up the stuff, you know. That's what we did. We were in a little room and we just looked it over. It was one black and white picture. It was about a line and a half and it was L-R-D-R-K-I-T. You know, everything was really, I mean, I remember when we only had 40 or 45 characters that we could use in the, uh, in the, um, Marks, you know. <laughs> yeah, and now, now it's like um, you know, four thousand. And sometimes I'm typing, and it's still not enough because I want to tell everybody everything. So, and I find that buyers will say to me at the table, they'll say, you know what? We probably wouldn't have looked at this except we read your remarks, and you told us everything upside down and backwards, and that's what came here. So it might look a little verbose, but it works. <laughs> um, all right, so. Uh, I have a, a, a presentation book that I um, that I have. It's just you know something I, I made up myself, and um, it's got some like pre stuff. And then my second one, when I come back, looks just the same on the front, but inside is my presentation, and that talks about how an appraiser appraises the house and charts and graphs. I mean. There's a lot of people who love that. There's a lot of people who aren't so happy with it, but they, they get it. When I, when I show them the graph that shows what happens if you're on the market on the first week versus the second week versus the third week, and then all the showings start to go down like this. And um, you know, all of that stuff is you know, very available to you through Kelly Williams and all the other websites that you get in. A lot of, a lot of people that I'm sure that you're listening to, like Brian Buffini's and the, the uh, um, some of those, some of those guys that are have been doing it a long time. Um, does anybody follow Brian Buffini? Mm -hmm. Know him? No, he's an Irish guy. He's he's from Ireland. And when I first started, he did a um, a two day seminar in some Podunk Cherry Hill hotel. He was just starting out. I didn't know that. And I stayed overnight. And uh, we had a two day seminar. And I just being in the Irish background with five children with the Irish names, Megan, Ryan, Park, Seamus, Ellen, Ellen, Timothy, Sean, and Rory Eamon, and the grandchildren are all Irish names as well. There's 12 of them. But, um, you know, I just liked, the, I liked his mannerisms and so forth. And now he's gray-haired, and uh, uh, but he's still really good. If you ever see any of his stuff, have you looked at it? Yeah. Lisa? We did, um, we did a, a, one of his seminars. Yeah. He's the Irish version of uh, Daryl, um, his name Daryl? Daryl Davis, yeah. 
Daryl Davis is from Long Island. <laughs> mm. And he, he presents himself as a guy from Long Island. Brian was from Ireland. He tells stories about his mom and how he came to visit her and she didn't know he was coming and so forth. But they both both made a fortune with other stuff. And it pays to listen to some of this. Daryl Davis has something where you join, I think it's, what is it per month? I don't know. It's like, like $18 a month or something. And he gives you all this junk. I mean, it's amazing stuff. You pour through it, and he he holds he holds a, a, a seminar, um, like a, a you know a Zoom, and he keeps going until all the questions are done from all the people that are you know. And it could be three hours that he's talking away, but uh, I use that time in the morning for that kind of stuff. About two hours in the morning. I'm not a cold caller, and um, you know where people do the cold calling at that hour, I'm doing the those kinds of things, and I'm looking up all the things that I can possibly use. Um, I explain on that second um, uh, presentation. I explain the um, the the, um, the, the process because they want to know what comes next. You know, they really do, and you don't want to throw it at them. Um, I had Byron this morning, and I and I called her brother because he speaks better English and he understands more. And I said, tell her to bring her checkbook when she comes in this morning, and. Uh, he said he would text her, but she didn't bring it, so then she had to go and come back. But they, they, the, the um, what do you call it, from the agent, um, the things that they want, what do they call that? Presentation of Presentation offers. Presentation of offers, yeah. They wanted a copy of the, of the deposit check. Not everybody asked for that, because it's not really due for five days, but they wanted that. So we give them what they want. But, uh, you know, there's all kinds of things like that. So I explain the process, what comes next, what comes next, what comes next, and I see their head shaking, and I know it's okay. And it, it's worth the time that I take on that. And the one thing I get across to them is it's all about you. It's in all my paperwork. It's in what I say. I said, you're the boss. You know, I'm going to present to you, but in the end, you're the boss. You're the one that's going to make the decisions, and you're going to be able to tell me what to do because I work for you. <laughs> and they like that. They like to be in charge that way. Um, I, can, I tell them all the ways that I can assist them. Um, I, I have some FAQs that I give out. Um, I, I, in the presentations that I did pre-COVID, I would tell them what happened in a 30-day, um, 60-day, 90-day situation because literally back then, when I was in real estate, even 20 years ago, 15 years ago, houses were taking six months to sell and we had to get extensions, you know, if we had a six-month listing. So um, times are different, so you're, the, the process has to be a little bit different. Um, I use a lot of checklists, uh, when I told you about my entourage, these are the contractors that I just love, love, love. They show up, they're reasonable, they don't gouge, they do the job, I never have to worry, I give it to them, I never have to follow up because I know that they're doing it. You know, my husband's a conveyancer, and uh, he's been doing that for 25 years, so he's my conveyancer and he conveys for some other people as well. And um, I love it that he, um, you know, does that because I know when I give it to him it's going to get done. Every once in a while, maybe 12 o'clock, 12.30 at night, we're going to bed, and I go, did you? And he'd say, now would you call Keller Williams and ask her <laughs> at 11.30? And I said, no, but I got you right here. But for the most part, I just give it and, and, and don't want to, um, you know, say it's, a, com, uh, it's supposed to be a comparative market analysis. Yes. I call it a competitive market analysis. I like the, the, the term. It sounds a little better. And I said, this is your competition. This is what we have to look at, and these are the people that have sold. And we can only do six months because that's all the appraiser's going to look at, so I don't want you to tell me about the house that got 30000 more eight months ago. And that's what we're going to have happen now. Yeah. All right, because Judy and John down the street sold their house for 50000 over. Mary and Tim are going to sell in September. It's not going to be the same market, but they know what Judy and John got last year, but that's too long ago. All right, so I don't even use a lot of comps that are six months, even though we could, because that's what an appraiser will use. But I, I try to give them the most recent because that's what's happening in the, in the, in the area right now. Okay. Um, oh, I, I just call it look for the less crowded pricing bracket, you know, and, and, um, and, and then also show them about the price changes. You know, because if we send them the, the client um, information, it doesn't show that that house was 220 and it wound up selling for 190, you know, and it doesn't show that it was 220 and wound up selling for 250. So it's important for them um, to know. You can, and I, I sort of mark up. I just do a marked up copy for me of the, the client <coughs> short thing, you know, the client short thing. I like the, the agent short thing rather. 
The, that, the agent short thing has all of that stuff. The client short thing has all of the, the words, like the agent just cuts yeah. off, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. which they could combine that and make it, you know. So I like them to see what that house has and I'm able to tell, and then I'm, I'm able to, I take the price and then I put, I cross out the price it was before and then show the price it is now and then show it. So, you know, that I can, and then I hand that to them just to look up because it's a short print. It's only about this big per. And, uh, and give them something to, you know, when I, when I walk away. I'm probably, you know, going back and forth instead of uh, uh, in, in a linear fashion here. But, oh, thank you notes, thank you notes, thank you notes. Um, I send a note out as soon as I've made the appointment. Sometimes I get to the second appointment, or the, the, yeah, the second appointment before um, they get the note with the mail the way it is. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I used to do it online. I used to, I used to send a quick text or something like that. It's not the same. It's mm -hmm. definitely not the same. Um, it was really funny. I had a shower for my future daughter-in-law that's getting married in Ireland next month. I'm going to be going for two weeks there. And uh, um, she sent me a thank you note for something you know, that I had <coughs> taken her out for her birthday. And um, my name is spelled I-N-G-E-L-S-B-Y. But most people put the L before the E because angle is L-E. There's a lot of words that have end in L-E. So she's been with my son for four, <coughs> four and a half years, five years. And her note said... Um, this is Maureen, I-N-G-L-E-S-B-Y. Mm -hmm. And so I gave her the shower sourdy. And I said, just to let you know before you get married, spell the name right. Because <laughs> <laughs> my kids are Killeen's. So, uh, you know, she wouldn't have had that. But it was really funny. We, we kidded about that. Um, I'm not above bringing a little gift or a little um, uh, handout of some sort, like a dollar store thing. Um, like the last several ones that I did. You know when you go to the dollar store, they have those... Like the pinwheels. daisies, yeah, pinwheels for a dollar. I think they're a dollar and a quarter now. Okay. <laughs> um, I I bring something like that, just a little something. Um, if they say, if we're, if we're talking and, and they say, uh, you know, how they love, uh, we're going to miss so, so and so pizza parlor when we move. You know, if it's around lunchtime or dinner, I'll say, you know what, I'll bring lunch and I bring the pizza from that place. You know, listen. You know, don't do the talk. Listen a lot, and you'll be able to tell what they what they like. And I always have a little arsenal in my uh, um, things of Wawa gift cards and um, oh my gosh, what are some other things? Um, Wawa gift cards. Little, little like odds and ends that I bought at the dollar store. If I'm late, I try not to be late. I'm really not good at that. I mean, I, it's not that I'm twiddling my thumbs. I'm just like I, I schedule too much and this thing ran late and so forth. And I don't like to be late and so I'll bring a Wawa gift card, you know, for, for five bucks and you know, bring that in with me to thank them for their patience and waiting for me and you know, maybe go buy some coffee. So, um, you know, anything like that, just to be different. My whole thing, and I, I've mentioned this before, but my whole thing is to be different and do things differently than the masses. And you, how many of you have had sellers that say, well, what, what are you going to do differently than the other three people did for me? And then you go, no, 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 no. <laughs> so be prepared, have your mission statement. You know, my little mantra is uh, recognized, recommended, and respected. That's on my cards, it's on my website, it's on my billboard. It's been there for 20 years out of the 30 some years. Um, tw well, it's 20 out of 28 years. And it's funny because I'm in a BNI group in media, and we, I went to three meetings at the court diner, and then we went into Zoom. And uh, so we, were, we did our, our little 30 minute presentation by Zoom. It really helped me because there's 46 people and I got to know everybody really well because at the court diner when they have two big long tables in that that dining room space, you know, you don't get to see everybody or talk to everybody. So it was great. And every every Friday it's high at Maureen Inglesby, Keller Williams Media, um, and recognized, recommended, and respected. So the first time we met in person, which is the first week of every month now, I got up to do my thing and I'm standing up at the table here and I said, hi, it's Maureen Inglesby, Keller Williams. And I took a break like that, and they went, recognized, recommended, and respected. Everybody in unison. <laughs> so, you know, you get the point across somehow by repetition. Repetition is not bad. It's not bad to say things over and over again if you really feel, you know, the need to do it. But the little gifts, and oh, my granddaughters, five of them, sold Girl Scout cookies. And until last year, one of the cookies was called Thanks A Lots. Remember them? Mm -hmm. And I, they, I spread the wealth, and they all... You know, I got two cases from everybody, and um, I had all these cases, and when I um, <coughs> came the first time, I brought them a thanks a lots, 
and a couple of tea bags. And, you know, it was something different. My mother, God bless her, died at 94. But she used to tell me when I, I was an only child, she had a four-year-old who died in ruptured appendix. She had twins that were two, four, and two, seven. There was only one incubator in the hospital. We're talking 80 years no. ago. Aww. And then she had three stillborns. So no. I was the only, she was in bed the whole time with me. But um, I would have put a gun to my head. <laughs> oh, I only lost one little girl from that encephaly at, at, uh, at what we called. No. And I thought I was going to die. But um, it, the, the, the whole idea was that, you know, I got a little more attention. She took care of my grandparents, they lived with us, so they were like having a brother and sister that needed a lot of help. But I was an only child, so she would sit with me and do my homework. And I remember having this black and white copy book when I was in kindergarten, and we had to cut and paste a picture of every letter of the alphabet. Uh, when I taught school, it was Mr. M with the munching mouth and you know, all that kind of stuff, but there it was just, you know. So I, would, I was frantic because I couldn't find anything that began with Z. And so she remembered that I had a puzzle with the animals, and she said, we'll use the word zebra. And I said, but it was heavy, it was wood, you know? And she said, we'll figure that, we'll put a piece of cardboard behind it, and we'll stay. And so I got my Z. But my mother was the, the one who said, whatever you do, do it just a little bit more. Because if you get an A plus on this, if you put a pic, but mommy, we don't have to put pictures on the front. If you put a, a, a cover and put a picture on it, and your friends don't do that, you know, the friends probably looked, who was she? You know, suck up. But anyway, she said, if you get an A plus, and then you get a B minus in a test, that A plus will wait that out and you'll get a B. So my, my whole life I've always been doing things a little bit differently. Find something that, that is you, that you can do, that makes you you. And it uh, can be in your, in your marketing, it can be on something you do for your clients or whatever, but it really is, um, it, it's, 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 it's so important to, um, to, to have just a, to be that person that they're going to when you're walking out they'll say oh gosh you know she's she told us more things than the other people did it all together or she knew more because um, she told us what's going on with uh, this that and the other and that's why that that um, you know thing that comes out every Wednesday um, from uh, SRA is amazing because that tells what's going on in every township in every town and you walk in and start talking about the fact that you know there's going to be a new uh, uh, trolley tracks put up at so-and-so, nobody else told them that, you know, you tell them about the assessment when the assessment was going on. A lot of people were afraid to talk about it because they didn't understand it themselves, but you need to understand all that kind of stuff. And um, tell them that you want to, that your whole life exists with making plans, so we want to make sure that we follow the plan. And uh, you want to make sure that you get the showing instructions from them so there's no problem. If you see a little thing in the door going down to the basement you want, and you didn't see a cat, you want to ask them about that so that you know because that can be an issue um uh comedy stories okay so that's all of those um my one of my favorite quotes is doing is where learning happens <coughs> and i think that you know a lot of times we come to these classes and we write stuff down and then we put it aside i'm, I'm going to like when your dad does his things i take out a piece of paper like this and you know write everything down but if I just tossed it somewhere, I wouldn't remember anything. And I, I try to look at it when it's done and highlight the important things that I need to remember. And then I put it all in the same folder because I, you know, I don't want to just listen to it and have it, you know, I'm 72. So a lot of things just fly right out. But, um, um, and the other thing that I've lived my life by is to do common things uncommonly well. And that's really, that's basically just saying, you know, everybody's doing what we're doing, but what is going to make us a little bit different. And, uh, and you need them to be, to be pre-sold on you. I went to a listing appointment not too long ago in Havertown, and they had all the, the Havertown people. You know, I don't sell as much in Havertown, but they used to live in Drexel Hill. And he said, I told my wife, when we pass your billboard, that when we go and sell our house, it's gonna be you. So I thought, God, this made me shade. And I knew the two other people had been there. And I said, so are we ready to sign now? And she says, no. <laughs> I said, why not? And she said, He's sold on you. I'm still thinking that they told me more than you told me. And he's saying, um, you know, you know, you don't want to, um, uh, you don't want to think about the price because it might, it, she might be right. You know, put it at a reasonable price and let them work up. But if you're at the high end, there's nowhere to go, right? And um, <laughs> she said, well, I want to do a, a, a commission reduction. Now I don't take commission reductions as normal. You know, every once in a while, if it's worth it, if it's a higher end, whatever, it's not a big deal. But when people ask me, I just go, no, 
I don't do that. And so I went to this one um, presentation, and the guy said, she asked me to ask you to take a price reduction. She asked yeah. <laughs> but he said, I told her, and I've always used this when people ask for a price reduction. Uh, you don't get um, Neiman Marcus service for target prices. And I wrote that down, and I use it all the time when people ask me about that. And then it shuts them up. <laughs> it's really funny. So there's a lot of things you know as, as you go along. Um, all right. Um, where are we have here? Trip. Oh, the top agent mindset. You know, as you're, as you're progressing up, if you're winning awards and doing things like that, there is a place for that. Again, it's all about them. There used to be a time when we all had our little book. Uh, Barbara probably remembers, you know, it was a, a three-ring binder, and you page, I was the top agent for the whole year for five years in a row, da 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 da, da you know, and I still see people posting that, and I do it too, because you want people to know you're working hard. But it's, they really don't care. They just want to know you're going to sell my house for the best price these shortest sure amount of time. So you can throw that out there, and if you're newer, and you don't have that, then you use Keller Williams. You use Keller Williams, you know, international, and for all the, like every week you look, and there's another award that they've won for something, you know, that has to say something. A lot of people will say to me, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm listing with you. I'm not necessarily listing because we work for Keller Williams. And I said, yeah, but you don't know what's available to me to be able to help you with Keller Williams. Right? Um, there's a lot of, of stuff like that. Uh, when I left Century 21 after 18 and a half years, and I was the top agent there for like 12 years uh, for the whole Century 21 gang. and. Um, when I left, it was quite a, <laughs> the, the, the phone lines and the text lines were, were going crazy because nobody thought I'd ever leave because I was so firmly entrenched, you know. We had a good time while we were killing wins, right? But, you know, there comes a time. I wanted to have a team. I wanted to have some help. They didn't want to do that. They thought that everybody, if everybody went on a team, then they would make less money, so they, they didn't want to do it. So they, they, told, they called all of my listings. I had like 11 or 12 at the time to ask them if they wanted to stay with Century 21 or move with me to Keller Williams. And, and all of them said, I didn't list with you, I was with Maureen. <laughs> Except for one guy that I got on floor duty four days before. He walked in, I took his listing, we built no rapport. He, I was just on floor when he called. And, um, and he didn't care one way or the other because I, you know, I wasn't pre-selling. You know, he just called someone to list my house and that was fine. But you know, it, it, does, it does make a big deal if, um, uh, because the sellers do want, par um, just listed says, what do sellers want in a listing presentation? Um, and I just really go quick here. The most requested information for a listing presentation is the estimated home value, no surprise, right? Followed by a market analysis, followed by a home valuation. And um, the, the, thing, the information they want from us is to include in a listing presentation is seller's tips, this is all the stuff that you do when you're on the presentation. A copy of the contract. How many of you give the seller a contract if in the first? Yeah, I do. I have a, a you know just a, a blank copy of the con I do for buyers and sellers, mm -hmm. and um, I, you know just get familiar with it because we're going to be filling in the blanks soon. And then there's it doesn't really take as long when the time comes because they've already read it. Um, it's really important, I find, to let people read those in their own time. Yes, because I'm someone who, if you ask me to sign a nine-page contract that I've never read before, I'm just, just going to say no. I'm going to yes. say, like, I'll talk exactly. to you in a week. I'm yeah. not going to sign it under pressure. Okay. I had to go to the, the, the car guy yesterday. He handed me three papers that his the finance guy was on vacation. And he said, we're going to fill this in later after you leave. I said, uh-uh. <laughs> I'm not signing these things. He said, well, they're only about this. And I said, I don't care. Yeah. I said, I deal with contracts all day. And his father was the general manager. And uh, his father, you know, went and filled them out while we waited. But I wasn't going to sign a blank piece of paper. Yeah. Um, agency disclosure. I really, really like Seller Shield. I don't know if you're using that fully or not, mm -hmm. because there's you can read it. When you edit it, there's no crossing out and all that. But it is a big deal for the sellers. They get so, especially if they're not real conversant with the technology. You know, and I actually had to pretend I was a seller one time and filled it all out as the seller because when they would say, well, how do I edit this? I don't know. <laughs> so I, I really, um, but I, I like it like that, but they get overwhelmed with the seller's disclosure. They really do. Mm -hmm. um, so they want some you know, little tips and, and tricks about that. And uh, more than 90% of the realtors report meeting with the client face-to-face -face for the listing presentation. 
I, I, I don't, I mean, I know sometimes we have to do it in a pinch, but I see a lot of, especially the Philly realtors that are, you know, showing the house, bing, bang, bing, bang, boom. The next thing comes over an agreement um, in, in like an hour. And I'll call them and I'll say, did you go over this with the client? No, no, we're, we're fine. I just gave them the general, uh, that would scare me. I would see that as a lawsuit waiting to happen, you know? So um, it's, it's, one guy had 17 different things wrong with his agreement, either not filled out or whatever. And I called him and I said, I'm not going to present this. And, this guy, and he said, just close it. We'll do it later. I said, no, I'm not going to do that. 71% um, of realtors said they make a pre-listing presentation packet. Um, the majority of realtors call the client and or send an email, while nearly 41% send a handwritten note. Less than 1% do not follow up at all. Yeah. I've had a couple of different agents recently like send me offers and they were like refused to send the seller's disclosure, the levy disclosure sign until the offer was accepted. And I was like, why like why are you giving me an issue about that? And I said, honestly, I'm sure my seller would prefer to know that your buyer reviewed this but prior yes. to accepting your offer. So, I've never heard of that. Yeah, a, a couple of different agents really? gave me a really hard are time. Are they just here. doing are they do you think they're not presenting it to their clients? I, I don't know, but I, I, you know, I said that was how I responded to that. I said, you, you know, I'm going to let my seller know that be, you refused to send that to me. Especially if there's stuff on there. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You don't so will have a not fit. Offers if not don't think we'll have a fit. No, I, if, I, if you, if, oh no, yeah, no. I gave them a really hard time. They didn't accept the offer. They, yeah. yeah, but I think that an offer is not even complete. Exactly. It's not. Right. It's not. I think, I think it's like you the can't. First, e it doesn't even count. And maybe that's also what they're trying to do. Well, is I have give a presentation a of offers uploaded. I always upload it. And mm -hmm. like when the agent sent me, she sent me just the iOS. And then in a separate email for approval, and I'm like, oh, I'm already kind of like, well, she doesn't seem very sharp. So then I said back, I was like, listen, you have, um, oh, it's important your offers come yeah. in nice. And I was like, can you please review the presentation of offers and send me everything that I'm asking for? And she's like, what are you talking about, the disclosures? And I said, well, that, yes, and like also the deposit money notice. Like, And she was like, well, um, I will just figure that out later. Can you just have a client accept my offer? So are, you, like, are you allowed to not present that offer? I mean, you, you would present it in the same light that we just right. talked about it. You know, I've got this offer, and it's for this amount of money, and this is when they want to settle, and the whole thing, and I'll, you know, I'll send it over to you, or I'll put it in the multiple offer paperwork mm -hmm. and stuff. You still need to present it, but you need to tell them, but I'm missing this, this, mm -hmm. this, and yeah. this. Yeah. And then let the seller say, well, we won't go that any credence unless we get those. Well, then you go back to the agent and say, talk to my seller, and they won't do anything about it until we have the whole thing. Okay, right. good. I'm just making sure. Like, yeah, I, mean, I mean, that's so it. important. Yeah, you know? very important. Right. Well, like, it's also just, you know, it just lazy. makes it's me, lazy. well, it makes, it could be worse than lazy. It yeah. makes yeah. me ask questions about that other agent. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. Like, are and you if, finding if stuff? And comes in right. piecemeal right. and, it's, and it's handwritten sloppily. I mean, I, I hand wrote one this morning because there was just no time. I found that 11 o'clock last night she wanted to do the offer. So I have nice teacher printing, you know, so I'm fine. But, um, for the most part, some of them are just, you can't even read what they say. I mean, it's just so unprofessional. If it's that way in the beginning, it's not going to get any better, yeah. truthfully. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. and no, I, I think you did the right thing. I actually, as soon as I'm showing the, the house, as soon as I know and I've made the appointment, I send the uh, yeah. disclosures over to the, the buyer so they can review before they get there. And sometimes they'll look and they say, oh, no, they got order in the basement. We don't want to go. Yeah. It saves me a lot of time and trouble. Totally. I, I send them over as well. Okay. We're talking a little bit get, about, oh, I'm over. Okay. When you get, when you have someone like that, that's a good recruiting call. <laughs> Seriously, you yeah. know, there's, they obviously don't know the basics of, of the real estate law. Well, so. I didn't know the person personally, but it was somebody that looks like they're very experienced. So I felt like mm -hmm. they... Well, they still need to go to a brochure yeah. for some good training. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. like, oh, yeah, because somebody else knew them. I was like, they do a lot of business. And I, was like, oh. I don't know where that time went, but we're over. But I, I was going to hint on, uh, for, because of listing presentations and so forth, um, I was going to uh, talk a little bit about generational mm -hmm. stuff and how to do that. So I can, if you want to... I can come back another time when you need a, a it's, speaker. It's what, 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 well, we always need a speaker. Yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, that's a whole thing into itself, but that's that up to you guys. You can I mean, I'm happy. go another no, so you can 10 do, minutes. So you can do a class part one and part two. Yeah. You're listening sure. presentations. You can do that. Well, that's true. That's true. I'll, I'll, I'll get you in July. I'm well, you, when are you going to, oh, when? We'll be back on the 13th. Okay, yeah. well, we'll cover for the first 11, for the July. Yeah. Uh, the other the questions I want to throw out to you right now about, you know, and you can jot them down if you need to. 
how did you hear about me? You want to know how they heard about you. They just didn't pluck you out. Um, where are you moving? Big question. What's motivating you? You want to know the motivation. If it's to be near their grandson in Florida, he's not getting any younger. You know, let's get this moving so you can see him as a toddler. It's more fun then. <laughs> um, uh, how soon do you have to be there? If we sell your home in the next 30 days, will that pose a problem for you? And if yes, what would that problem be? Um, some sellers are scared it would go too fast. <laughs> uh, what would happen if your home did not sell? Get them to think about that as far as pricing is concerned. Um, now, there are some people that say, how much do you want to list your house for? I don't, I feel weird about that, you know? Sometimes if I give my thing, I'll say, was this kind of where you thought it should be? And most of the time we'll say, yeah, it's exactly where we thought. But there's always that one that says, oh, I thought I was gonna get 40,000 more. Mm -hmm. um, how much do you owe in the property? Very important, before you waste your time, you wanna know that they can do this, right? I'll be sending you a packet of information. Do you have any questions? Will all the decision makers be there when we meet? That's important too. You wanna to tell them all the ways you're going to help or assist, whatever way you wanna call, call it that. You wanna put it in writing in one of your packets, but you want to know, you want them to know that you're there to, to help them, okay? Um, so generational wise, you know, we, we're, we're, giving some, we're, we're going into the Gen Z people now coming to buy. We've been talking about, this, I've been talking about the spoiled rotten brat millennials for a long time, and I just come out and say that and they laugh. But uh, I said, these are the buyers for your house, the spoiled rotten brat millennials. I said, they want it, you know, they want gray walls and they want, the, I always say, you know, if I blindfolded somebody and put them on a sofa somewhere and then open them and say, now where do you think you are? Are you in your house or your three friends' houses? Because you all look the same. You know, all the, all the houses look the same, they're all gray. But uh, that's the way of the world today. Um, trusted advisor is a word, word that I use a lot. Trusted advisor. You know, there's some real strong words that I've learned over, over the years to talk about that. But going back to, um, you know, you've got the people from 1909 to 1945 who were born. They're the traditionals and the matures. They pretty much will just go along with the flow. They just like you for, for being you. and. Whatever you say goes. They don't want to be bothered. They're 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 retiring. They just want to have fun for the rest of their lives, and they they'll they'll do whatever you say. The 46 to 64 are the baby boomers, and there's an older group of them and a younger group of them, and uh, that's the we generation where we all do things together and we all make decisions together and we all sat around at the flower power uh, sit-ins together and all that jazz. So that's that's the baby boomers. And then we've got the 1965 to 79, which is the Gen X, and that's the what's in it for me group, mm -hmm. right? And I'm not picking on anybody here, but that's, that is what they call it. Then the Gen Y is 1980 to 2000, and then the millennials 2000 to 2017, and then all those after that are the Gen Z. And they think differently, and uh, it's more important what their friends on Facebook or Instagram or whatever <laughs> say than what you say or their parents say, so you have to make sure that they understand when you're working with them, especially with buyers. And um, uh, you want to tell them, I tell them, and I make a list. I think is it Jamie has a list of the things that she does mm -hmm. in the background. You know, I think they, especially in this market, they think it's just the sign's going to go up and, and the house is going to be sold. And what did you do for that commission money? But they don't know what we're doing ahead of time, and they don't know how hard it is to be going over 12 offers from start to finish, and you need to go over the offers. You don't want to look stupid later on if you miss something. I did that once, I'll never do it again. Um, a very prominent real estate agent, who shall remain nameless, sent me an offer on Christmas Eve. Now I have five little kids, you know, or I guess they were like, you know, 10 to 16 or whatever. And we were, you know, getting ready for Christmas, and I looked it over, it seemed like a great, great thing. And Anna Lee, who is a good friend of mine from, um, you know Anna from, uh, down in Aston, it was a family member of hers and she didn't want to take it. And uh, I felt stupid in her eyes and you know, she said, look, it's a, silly, a mistake anybody could have made. But um, in that contract at that time, this is like 20 years ago, um, it mentioned that if the, that the seller had their house on the market and if it didn't sell in 30 days, then the agreement was null and void. And it was, it was typed in, like in where you wouldn't even expect it to be and I missed it. And that happened. And then I called that agent and, and he said, well, you know, we have that. I said, oh my God. And I had to go back and eventually sold, it was fine. But, um, you know, read, 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 make,
make sure that you that you have all when you do the contract make sure you cross that that money is you know where it's going and and that they can't take any more than the, what the buyer has in the bank. But it's all important, and you have to read it over. So the sellers need to know that. And by telling them that you're doing all these things, they're going to trust you more and, and understand your business more. Okay. Um, and I said the, the Generation Xers are the latchkey kids, and they're very independent. And the Ys, they all have plaques. They all have plaques. They're mollycoddled. Um, you know, they're, they're um, you know, they, everybody gets a trophy kind of thing, you know. So... Um, you know, every, everybody's different, so you got to work to that. You want to talk to them. You want to talk to the accountant differently than you talk to the artist. You want to talk to the um, insurance person differently than the one who um, has a, 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 a florist business, because right brain and left brain is very different. You want to model them. You know, if they lean into the table, you lean into the table. You know, if they, you know, you, you know, want to do one of these, if they're doing one of these, to make it all seem the same. Yeah, we could do a part two at some point, you know. Any other questions before we finish up? Yeah. Just real quick, we have a, a, a customer referred to us from uh, an estate attorney. And um, this customer, so this the house, they, they seem to be now with, with uh, questions that they're giving back to us. They want to price it thirty thousand over what it should be because it needs a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Okay, again, you, somebody will make more money, and then they're questioning commission. So, uh, my thought would be because I want to do a second visit with them, would be, well, your attorney is great, and we've done a lot of work with his clients, and he has a set fee, just like you do. Mm -hmm. I don't think you asked him. That's right. That's a great thing. You think? That's a great thing. Absolutely. Because I don't know what else to say to people yeah. like that. It's like, and like you said, a lot of times when it's in a state, people get greedy. It's yeah. a gift yeah. from your parents. Found money. Found yeah. money. And, and I like your thing about, you know, your attorney's like, he's the Neiman Marcus guy. Yeah. He's on Target. Yeah. He referred you to Neiman Marcus. Now, I'm not going to tell Target. people so, that I, I'm not going to say to them, why would you... You know, do this with Neiman. I'm not saying that myself. My client said that. Oh. Okay. You know, and they, the the client said, you know, to his wife, why would we pay a Neiman Marcus realtor target prices? It wasn't coming out of my mouth. It came out of their mouth. You know, and so because you don't want to come in and say I'm wonderful and there's nobody else like me. You know, you have to be very subtle about that. But that's a really good thing. Even my, my Aunt Eileen, she was the best at going to Strawbridge's when Strawbridge's was where Target is now at 320, 420. And, and, and the people were there and they, had a little, they made a little commission, the, the salespeople at, at Strawbridge's then. And she would see like a mark or a rip on something and she would take it up to the baby and she'd say, you know, this is a rip here. And she'd take off. And they took off 10 or 15%, you know. Now you go up to somebody, you know, Coles or whatever and say, here's a little rip here. And they go, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there's, there's the way of the world is that people are not flexible when it comes to money. And you do, do need to tell them the things that you do and where your money goes, you know. Because when I start telling them that I've got 1099s to pay and people on my team and um, my marketing and my advertising and those things that I'm paying for are helping you to get your house sold and I need to do that. But I can't do it if you're not paying me my full amount because by the time I'm done, all I can go to two is the Acme and um, my, my money's gone. So realistically, and using examples is very important. They can see through that. I don't know, I like that. And this is being recorded, so I'm going to watch this again. Oh, good. That, no, that, I think that's the perfect way to answer. Absolutely. You've got to, you've got to tell them. And I, as I say here, I would say we are realtors, not realtors. Because you don't go to the Acme, you go to the Acme, right? It's the same idea. And it's funny how they, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll remember it. But it's true. If you use examples, if you, you make them up, I don't care, you know. But use examples to illustrate the different points and spend that extra half hour with them. Because when you leave, and, you, and I have a, a, a note card in my car that I go and mail on the way to my next appointment to thank them for their time. And, uh, you know, that way they'll get it sooner. And uh, that sort of completes the circle. All right. I'm always around if you have questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, did you give out the handouts? Six. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. So when you're yeah, sure. when you get right, over here. the um, uh, the objective. Barb, do you have the handouts or is it? I, I about it again. That's the way I like. I like to streamline. Um, any marketing materials that you have, all those kinds of things are always really good. Um, let me see what else. 
Oh, I am a teacher by profession. And so I think, I really do think all the teachers that I know have a, a, a little bit of a gift of explaining, like parsing things down to people. And I find that it's easy for me to be able to say, all right, you don't get this big picture, but let me explain. And I use stories to, to um, get it across or examples, you know, because I've got 30 years of them. So, um, you know, when I talk about mediation, I say, I only had one mediation, and that was about the guy who took really good care of his house. He moved to Lancaster. He worked for Upper Darby Township, and uh, he thought he'd never see anybody again in Upper Darby. And um, the buyers, after six months, were getting water in the basement all the time. And they called their agent, who called me, who said they want a French drain and a sump pump from the seller, you know, six months down the road. And I said, no, it's not happening. So the seller happened to be coming in because one of his buds was retiring. And he went by and he took pictures of the house because when he was there, he had rose bushes lining the entire one side of the house. And they had taken them all out. So where the rose bushes were absorbing the water, now it was going into the basement and he had proof and, and he won. That was my only mediation that I'd ever been at. I explained that and how it went and then people go, okay, now I get it. You know, and if they're in a, in, a, in a work situation where it has mediation too, that's, that's fine. I mean, because they'll know. Um, my one thing is if, when you're dealing with siblings from an estate or whatever, do not sit at the kitchen table under the family portrait. <laughs> it brings up too many memories for them um, and, and siblings have a way of fighting over things that you never thought that they would if you knew them pre-deceased um, and there's two of them that you just go let's just get this done and get out of here and the other three are going this is my children's college fund you know we want the most we can get and then I'm sitting there going like this and they're fighting over it I want them all there because they're all part of the decision making but it's, you know, you really have to sort of set the parameters there. Um, so, uh, you know, teaching is, is something important. Honesty is really important. That's my big shtick with my kids, with my husband. Um, you know, uh, he'll, he'll go to the, the giant and I'll say, you're not going to the liquor store, are you? And he said, no, I'm not going to the liquor store. You know, are you being honest with me? But, um, it, you know, it's, it's a big thing with me. If, if I'm nothing, I'm, I'm honest. And... I will tell you honestly what I'm thinking. If you decide on a different thing, that's your problem. That story. With the estate sales, has there ever been a situation where you couldn't get the siblings all to to agree together, yes. and you didn't get the sale? I got the sale. I mean, I got the listing, but they they continually fought all the way through. And literally, two of them didn't come to settlement. They were all on the on the will, which was the hard part, you know, because they all got a chunk. Yeah. And they all wanted to be there, and I included them all. And they were civil with each other, but yeah. two of them signed outside of closing rather than being in the same room. Isn't that a shame? Yeah. That happens over something like that, where they were fine when they were growing up and through their whole lives. I had a um, listing appointment. It was a state sale with nine siblings. Oh. And they didn't even meet each other until the, the father passed away. No way. Oh, it was insane, oh, and yeah. I definitely didn't get it. I mean, it was really, well, but I don't know what happened to it. This it would have but. taken a superhero to get that. Oh, right. Yeah, like, absolutely. They, they have bigger problems. A lot. Uh -huh. It was really a lot. Yeah. They have bigger that's problems. Awesome. Wow. That's got to be tough. <laughs> Um, one of the other things that I feel is of the utmost importance is, is communication. You ask any seller, or buyers for that matter, um, you know, if they were listed previously or if they listed and took it off the market or whatever, what their biggest issue was, and it was about communication, how, you know, the agent took the listing and then they never heard from them again. So you want to say that to them before they ask you or you bring that up. You just say, you know, the number one thing in my book is communication. So we're going to pick a day and a time every week, and if we can all possibly do it, we're going to be talking at that point in time. And I set it all up so they go, oh, there's a question I don't have to ask. But that is, if you talk to people, even if you talk to people in a social situation, and they say, oh, my goodness, when we sold our house two years ago, we never heard from our agent. You know, the only time she called is if she got an offer on the house. We never heard from her any other time yeah. before. But, uh, you know, not right now when the houses are selling in four days, but when it changes and their, their mind is still on the four-day sale and it hasn't sold in 12 days, you want to have that communication with them. If you see something on NAR, or you see something on PAR, or you see something in, in the um, you know, Tri-County that we talk about at the meetings, you know, 
take it, cut and paste it, send it to them and say, here, this is what we were talking about before. And it just makes more value to you to, to, to know. And this is what I always say at the meetings. You know, I want people to be impressed by the fact that you know, we can be the source of information to our buyers and sellers on a constant basis. We have the stuff that comes right to our desktop or right to our laptop. We have it there. Just you reading it doesn't help them. So think about who